Hello and welcome to another Red Knight demo. This one's a, a new feature that's going to the Pro Pack fairly soon. Um, and basically it's a new way of, of dealing with dense mocap data curves or animation curves and resampling them and cleaning some of the noise up. Um, it's based on the Butterworth filter um, that Motion Builder has got. In fact, it's a replication of the Butterworth filter code. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just first going to drop some mocap data in from Maya. That should do. Five, three. I no idea which one that one is. It's, in fact, I think it's that one. Try that. Um, this UI uh, will be going through in much more detail in another video. Um, it's just a way that we use of getting mocap data onto our rig systems. Let's close that down. Let's have a look what we've got. Wrong one. Let's try that one. Three. Let's bake it off. Okay. Close it off. Right, so we've got a bit of mocap data. Um, and this is just coming through HIK plugs onto our rig. Basically, we allow uh, connections from HIK to go straight to the rigs. Um, but it's not that I want to look at. What I want to look at is the actual animation curves themselves. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the graph editor over here and we're going to pick a curve at random, that looks pretty good actually. Um, and we're going to try and clean this curve off, or we'll try and simplify it. I'm not bothered about what the animation data itself looks like, so let's get rid of that and we'll just full screen that. Um, and first what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the one we've currently got. This has been in Studio Pack for ages now, a couple of years at least. Um, and this relies on Maya's internal simplify algorithm. So this is basically what Maya currently does, and this is why we need a new um, a new method. So what I'm going to do is we'll toggle buffers, and we'll start winding this up. And what you'll see is what Maya attempts to do of resampling, and it kind of bears some resemblance, but it pops around all over the place. It doesn't necessarily uh, maintain the average data. It doesn't kind of try and take a nice smooth curve through this. It tries to maintain peaks, and unfortunately, some of the times the peaks you don't want to maintain because that's the noise itself. Um, it's just not really up to the job, and it's not really up to the job, especially if you find somewhere that works on that particular curve, but you're trying to do another curve that's got different tolerances. It, it's not really acceptable. So let's get rid of that. And we'll come to Pro Pack, and we'll go to the new one, which is the Butterworth filter curve, this thing here. Incidentally, it is linked to the other one. This, you can use them both side by side. Um, we've put a button there just so you've got both methods available if you wanted to. Okay, right, the first thing, um, there are two methods in this. One is a live method where effectively, like the other one, when you move the sliders, it automatically and dynamically does the sampling live. Uh, the other one is you set the things up and you want to just process it as a single process. Now, when you enter the tool, the first thing it does is it tries to set these times up. And these are based on either, if I set times, either the range you've currently got in the time, in the time range, uh, as you can see, or it's set on our red knight selection which is the selection box or it's set on the curve that's selected so if we select some values in the curve like that it'd be based on those curves as we've got selected so there's three methods and in fact if you hover over that it tells you the order in which these things get prioritized and, and how it sets this data up and once you've locked it you've locked those particular times in so let's go back to that other curve which was probably a bit more suitable Right, first thing we'll do is we'll set the times. So I'm going to use that time range, okay? So we'll set times and it's set it and it's locked the times. You see, it's taken those two out, it's, it's disabled these two. Um, I'm going to toggle the tangents because I don't want to see the tangents when I'm doing it. And I'm going to do a buffer snapshot. Now, for those who don't know the buffer curves, Maya has uh, up here, in fact, if you go show buffer curves, has a way of recording buffer curves. It has a way of recording two sample, two different um, stages of this curve. So A, you can see, well, you'll see as we move these things around, you'll see a gray outline of where it used to be, and also it allows you to switch between those two buffers. So that's actually quite a useful thing if you didn't know, already know about it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just process that. And that processes the range that I've set, um, and you'll see what's going on there. If I do that, I'm gonna just go into live mode. Now in live mode, it's completely different. In live mode, all the time is dynamic. The curve it's processing is dynamic. Everything is dynamic. So if I go live, you'll see it's taken that off. It's opened these things back up. And what I can do now is I can wind this effect in and out. You can see it's winding that data in and out based on it. Um, these two sliders, the first one is a sample rate. For those who don't know, Butterworth is effectively based on a, um, it's an audio algorithm more than anything for taking noise out of audio. 
So it's really good at, at um, being passed an array of data and trying to take noise and, and, um, and that's such like it off, uh, off curves. Um, so this is the actual sample rate. This is frames per second in our case. Um, and obviously the more you do, the more samples it tries to take and the more keys you get in between, the less, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The one below, the cutoff frequency, well, the frequency is the width of the sample. So the wider the sample, the smoother the curve will be as it goes through. And the narrower the sample, the more it will look like the original curve. Okay, so if we do kind of three and we can wind this thing in and out interactively, and you'll see just how much it's trying to clean this noise up, how it's trying to take the, the dirt out of the EM keys and the noise out of the keys. The other one we have here is a resample to frame. So the problem with this is that because it's dynamically sampling, these curve points might not be on whole frames, they might be on subframes. Um, and a lot of animators like the curves on, sorry, like the keys on frames. What this does is it does a post filter. So it, it bakes it to the frame. It bakes it in this case at 30 frames a second. And you'll see the curve just winding in and out as it tries to best fit that data. Okay. Like I said, you go really low in the cutoff rates. It starts to mimic the original curves more and more and more. And you can even switch the buffers. So if you've got that and you want to test it, you can play your animation. And you can just switch the buffers back to the original one, or you can switch them back to that. So it gives you some really good options for, for doing that. But the nice thing about this is it's not just based on the fact that it's live, it isn't based on this one curve. I can select anything else that I want, any other time ranges I want. It's all dynamic. I can just select that, for example. And again, I can wind this up and it becomes on that part. I can select another object, it's, it's those curves there, and I can wind those in and out. So it's completely dynamic when it's live like this. Okay. The other thing is that it's not just based on one object. I can, if I take live off, let's re reset this back to where the default, which is 30 and 7, which is what um, Motion Builder does. If I select everything, or will set the, set the ranges. Bear in mind this, I'm not in live mode. So in this case, I've set the ranges and it's locked it. So this is what everything's going to be processed against. And I'm going to do a single process. Uh, what went wrong with our graphic? Uh, no keys to buffer, excuse me. Let's try again. There we go, I'll hit the wrong button. So that's processed and resampled everything. So that's actually done two passes. It's done a butter with filter and it's done a resample. If we just do a single one, I'm hitting the wrong button. So I've moved the buttons around today. There we go, it's processed everything. And basically it's trying to smooth everything out and give you a really nice way of smoothing and dealing with noise in mocap data. It's particularly good for things like audio where you've got lots of fine little details, lots of fine noise and you just want to nick that fine noise out of it. On bits of data like this, it's good at smoothing stuff out if you've got dirt noise, etc., etc. Uh, but it's a really powerful process. Um, hope that's useful. Um, thanks very much for watching. Bye.